Our next topic is power calculation in case of AM. So uh, we know that the expression of AM signal for single tone sinusoidal modulating signal is given by for single tone sinusoidal modulating signal expression of AM. Expression of AM is given by S of T equal to AC in bracket 1 plus MA cos omega MT cos omega CT. So this is the expression. Now if we expand this expression, we get AC cos omega CT plus AC MA by 2 cos omega C plus omega MT and AC MA by 2 cos omega C minus omega MT. So this is the expression of single tone, uh, this is the expression of AM for single tone modulating signal. So this expression I have told you that this expression is very important because sometimes in question the expression of AM is given for single tone and we have to write the equation in this form and we have to compare the value and find the amplitude of carrier and modulation index. So now we have this expression and this ex same expression we have used to derive bandwidth of AM. So this is the carrier component, this is the upper sideband term, this is the lower sideband term. So the power requirement is nothing but the power requirement of this carrier term, power requirement to transmit this upper sideband, power requirement to transmit this lower sideband. So first of all, we will calculate the power requirement for this term. So this is called carrier power because it is having only carrier frequency. So we will denote it by carrier power and the power is calculated by VRMS into IRMS or we can also write VRMS square divided by resistance R or in terms of peak amplitude this can be written as V0 by root 2 whole square divided by R. So we can write V0 square divided by 2R. So it is nothing but the peak amplitude of the signal and this is the resistance. So in this case the peak amplitude of this signal is AC. So the carrier power will be AC square divided by 2R. So this is the carrier power. If the resistance is not given then we take R equal to 1 ohm. So we have calculated the value of carrier power. Now this is the upper sideband term and it is having amplitude AC MA by 2 and similarly in the same way we can calculate the power requirement to transmit this term and for this the amplitude is AC MA by 2 so the peak amplitude is AC MA by 2 so this is called upper sideband upper sideband power and it is given by P USB which is equal to amplitude square divided by 2R, the amplitude is AC MA by 2 whole square divided by 2R. So we get AC square MA square 2 square is 4, 4 into 2 is 8, so this is 8R. So the carrier amplitude in terms of carrier amplitude this upper sideband power is the carrier amplitude is AC square by 2R, the carrier power is AC square by 2R. So we can write in terms of PC which is PC MA square by 4, PC MA square by 4. So this is upper sideband power. Now lower sideband power, since the amplitude of upper sideband and the lower sideband is same the power requirement for upper sideband and lower sideband will also be same. So the lower sideband power would be PLSB equal to 
सेम ए सी एम ए बाय टू होल स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय टू आर हेंस वी गेट पी एल एस बी इक्वल टू पी यू एस बी विच इज इक्वल टू पी सी एम ए स्क्वायर बाय फोर सो द टोटल पावर रिक्वायरमेंट टू ट्रांसमिट ए एम सिग्नल वुड बी द सम ऑफ टोटल पावर रिक्वायरमेंट this total power requirement would be sum of carrier power plus upper side bend power plus lower side bend power and the sum of lower side bend power and upper side bend power is also known as total side bend power this term can also be written as total side bend power so we get pt and this is pc and the lower side bend power is pc ma square by 4 plus upper side bend power is pc ma square by 4 so sum of these two is called total side bend power which is pc ma square by 2 so this is carrier power and this is total side bend power and this is pt so total transmitted power is if we take pc common then we get pt is equal to pc 1 plus ma square by 2 for sinusoidal for sinusoidal modulating signal so this formula you can remember and you have to remember that this formula is only for single tone sinusoidal modulating signal now we have to derive the formula for transmission efficiency so in the next definition is for transmission efficiency the transmission efficiency is defined as ratio of total side bend power to total transmitted power total side bend power to total transmitted power so this eta is equal to psb which is total side bend power this is the total side bend power which is denoted by psb and total transmitted power is pt so if we substitute the value of total side bend power which is pc ma square by 2 which is pc ma square by 2 divided by pt pt is pc 1 plus ma square by 2 so we get ma square by 2 divided by 1 plus ma square by 2 this pc and pc will get cancel and if you multiply these two here in denominator we get eta is equal to ma square upon 2 plus ma square if you multiply these two 2 plus 2 and 2 will get cancel and we get ma square so this is the transmission efficiency and to calculate in percentage we have to multiply it by 100 so this is also for sinusoidal for sinusoid modulating signal so this is the transmission efficiency for sinusoid and this is the uh, total transmitted power for sinusoid so now this is the only for sinusoidal signal so what will happen if we calculate it for any type of message signal that means if we consider message signal in general then what will be the power requirement or you can say what will be the total transmission efficiency we have to see so let's see uh, in general power requirement for am what will be the formula for this so in general 
the expression for am signal is ac 1 plus k into mt cos omega ct so now we have to calculate the power requirement for this so we have to expand this one so we will get ac cos omega ct and ac ka mt cos omega ct so power requirement for this we have calculated which is ac square by 2r now the we have to calculate the power requirement for this term so the power requirement for this term would be psb because this is the side bend this is the carrier term and this is the multiplication of message and carrier so it will give side bend so this is giving double side bend so if we calculate power then we know that the power is calculated by the formula 1 upon time period integration over the time period and the signal suppose x of t magnitude square into dt so if we substitute this xt as ac k mt cos omega ct then we get 1 upon t integration from minus t by 2 to t by 2 suppose this is ac square k square m square t cos square omega ct dt this will be the power requirement for this double side bend suppressed carrier so in this case if we derive it or uh, if we expand this formula cos square theta then we can also write 1 upon t minus t by 2 to t by 2 ac square k square m square t divided by 2 1 plus cos 2 omega ct dt so if we expand this cos square theta then we can write 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2 so this psb we can also write 1 upon t integration from minus t by 2 2t by 2 this is ac square k square m square t by 2 dt plus 1 upon t integration from minus t by 2 to t by 2 ac square k square m square t cos 2 omega ct by 2. The integration of this term will be 0 because it is showing that the average value of cos in a complete time period. So if you calculate for any type of message signal for this duration you will get the value as 0. You can take any message signal and you can derive it that you will get see that the value is 0. And here we can uh, we know that this AC is the carrier amplitude which is constant K is the amplitude uh, sensitivity of modulator which is also constant so we can write this PSB equal to AC square K square by 2 1 upon T integration from minus T by 2 to T by 2 and M of T mod square into DT and this term this term from the basic definition of power if we want to calculate the power of xt then we have to integrate it from uh, integrate it over the time period t and x of t square dt and 1 upon t and here we are getting 1 upon t integration over the time period m of t mod square dt it means that this term is showing power of message signal so this is power of mt so power of mt is denoted by let us say sm divided by 2. So this is the total sideband power in general. Total sideband power in general which is sum of upper sideband power and lower sideband power. And the carrier power we know carrier power is given by ac square by 2r. So this is our carrier power in general. Now we have to calculate the total power transmitted. The total power transmitted will be PT. Total transmitted power is sum of 
कैरियर पावर प्लस साइड बैंड पावर एंड कैरियर पावर इज पी सी एंड साइड बैंड पावर इज ए सी स्क्वायर के स्क्वायर एस एम डिवाइडेड बाई टू आर इफ यू टेक रेजिस्टेंस ऑल्सो देन इट विल बी टू आर इफ यू टेक रेजिस्टेंस देन वी गेट टू आर ऑल्सो ओके हियर आई एम नॉट कंसिडरिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस हियर वी हैव एज्यूम द रेजिस्टेंस आर एज वन बट इन जनरल वी नो दैट इफ द आर इज देयर देन इट इज इन द डिनोमिनेटर सो वी आर कंसिडरिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ आर हियर बिकॉज द वैल्यू ऑफ पी सी वी हैव डिराइव इट्स हैविंग रेजिस्टेंस आर सो दैट्स वाई वी आर टेकिंग द रेजिस्टेंस इन टू पिक्चर सो दिस ए सी स्क्वायर बाई टू आर इज ऑल्सो पी सी सो दिस इज ऑल्सो पी सी सो वी गेट पी सी के स्क्वायर एस एम so this is total power so we get pc 1 plus k square into sn okay now we have to derive transmission efficiency so transmission efficiency is eta which is ratio of side band power to total power and the side band power is this one pc k square sm pc k square sm and total power is pc 1 plus k square sm pc 1 plus k square sm so this pc and pc will get cancelled and we get eta is equal to k square sm divided by 1 plus k square into sm so this is the transmission efficiency in general so if we want to check this formula for any message signal then we have to calculate the power of this a uh, message signal suppose uh, we have we assume message signal mt as am cos omega mt then the power requirement for this is am square by 2r okay so now the power is uh, power is sm and which is am square by 2r so here we get this k square am square divided by 2r divided by 1 plus k square suppose we take r equal to 1 if we take r equal to 1 okay so uh, we are taking see here we are taking r equal to 1 so in the starting also we can we should assume this r equal to 1 so you can make this correction because here also we have not consider resistance r so here we are assuming resistance r as 1 so here also let's assume r is 1 so we get ac square by 2 this is the total side band power this is the carrier power so here also we have to take this value of r as 1 so the remaining thing is same will remain same and here also let's assume the resistance of r is 1 so the amplitude square divided by 2 will be the power which is s of m this is the power of message signal and we get am square by 2 and here also we get am square by 2 so eta equal to and we also know that the modulation index modulation index ma is equal to k into am for sinusoidal modulating signal if the message signal is sinusoid the amplitude peak amplitude is am and the amplitude sensitivity of modulator is ka so the k into am is modulation index so we can write k into am as modulation index and we get ma square by 2 divided by 1 plus ma square by 2 and after solving this we get ma square upon 2 plus ma square this is the same result which we have derived for single tone sinusoidal message signal so it means that this is the general formula for any type of message signal if we assume sinusoidal signal we get the same result ma square by 2 Two plus ma square. Similarly, if we consider another message signal, suppose a square wave. Hello. 
having amplitude am and minus am and time period t this is a continuous signal periodic signal having time period t suppose this is our message signal and if we calculate power of this square wave sm which is 1 upon time period integration over the time period let us 0 to t m of t magnitude square into dt and after solving this we get am square so power of message signal is am square so if we apply this formula to calculate transmission efficiency if our message signal is a periodic signal or periodic square wave then this eta transmission efficiency is k square am square divided by 1 plus k square am square and for this type of message signal modulation index will be k into maximum value of mt and if our message signal is square wave having peak amplitude am so in this case also the modulation index is k into am so again we can write this k into am as modulation index so if we substitute this value we get ma square upon 1 plus ma square so this is the transmission efficiency for square wave this is for square wave Similarly, if you assume any triangular wave which is periodic with time period t, you will get the transmission efficiency as ma square divided by 3 plus ma square for triangular signal. Triangular signal. Triangular message signal. This is square wave message signal and this is for sinusoidal message signal. So, this will be the transmission efficiency for three different cases. So, this is the general formula. This is the general formula. This formula you should remember because uh, any message signal may be uh, any message signal you can calculate power of that message signal and then derive for transmission efficiency. The message signal can be sinusoidal, the message signal can be square wave, the message signal can be a triangular signal, the message signal can be a random signal. So, for any random signal we can calculate mean square value which gives power of that random signal and we substitute this in this equation the power of that random signal if we substitute in this equation we get the transmission efficiency for that message signal so this formula is very useful and most of the questions is asked for sinusoidal signal but if the question is twisted and you have to calculate the transmission efficiency for any message signal which is derived from some random variable then we will see that in random variable the power is calculated by its mean square value so the message signal power will be calculated by its mean square value and then we will substitute into this equation and can get the transmission efficiency for that random modulating signal so next uh, we have formula for single tone sinusoidal modulating signal transmission efficiency ma square upon 2 plus ma square. Suppose I take modulation index ma equal to 0 0.5, then we get eta equal to 11.11, 11 11.1%. .11 if I take modulation index 0 0.707, which is 1 by root 2, we get eta equal to 20%. If I take modulation index ma equal to 1, we get eta equal to 33.3%. So, here we can see that the eta transmission efficiency is monotonically increasing function of modulation index. We are increasing the value of modulation index, the transmission efficiency is also increasing. But we also know that we cannot increase the modulation index more than one because uh, more than one modulation index gives over modulated signal and for over modulated signal we have phase reversal problem. So, we, and we cannot uh, recover it from envelope detector that is why we cannot take the value of modulation index greater than 1. So, we will try to maintain the modulation index very close to 1 or 1. So, in this case if we take the modulation index 1 we get percentage efficiency in percentage is 33.3. 
So, eta, which is the ratio of sideband power to total power, and the total transmitted power is carrier power PC one plus MA square by two. And if we take MA equal to one, and PT is equal to three hundred volt. Suppose we are having, uh, we are required to transmit the three hundred watt power, or the required transmitted power is three hundred watt. Then, if we substitute this value, we get three hundred one plus one by two. So we are getting PC is equal to two into three hundred divided by three. That means two hundred watt. So we are transmitting the AM signal, and to transmit that AM signal. The total power required is 300 watt, and out of 300 watt, 200 watt power is required to transmit only carrier signal. But we know that our message signal lies in sideband, not in carrier. The importance of carrier is to just carry the message signal for a longer distance. But here, the maximum power is taken by the carrier itself and the 100 watt power will be in the sideband because the total power is sum of the total power is sideband power and carrier power so here we get the sideband power is total power minus carrier power which is 300 minus 200 so we get 100 watt so the informative power is only 100 watt because in this sideband we have message signal So this is the loss of power, or you can say waste of power. That's why this amplitude modulated signal is not used, and we go to the types of AM signal in which we save this power, we suppress this carrier signal, and save the power so that we can get the better efficiency.